Don't you hate it when you look at your timeline, you see a string of numbers that look more like some password a hacker would use instead of any sort of useful clip name that relates back to your script? Me too. But I also hate manually changing the names of all of them because it takes so long. So that's why today I want to show you how you can automatically rename your clip's display name based on the metadata found on the media page of DaVinci Resolve 17. The way we're going to automatically rename the clips is by using the metadata that we have set up. It was either shot in camera or if it wasn't in this case, I'm going to show you how to do that here in the media page. Go to the metadata tab. And then over here, there's a little drop down that a little see more info. We're going to choose shot and scene. This is everything in here you could use to rename your clips. All I'm really concerned with and care about are scene and take and maybe a keyword. So we're going to make sure our scene and take are available in our list view over here as well. Just right click. You can choose scene and take and then drag them so that you can work with them quickly. And then I'm going to group all of scene one together so that I only have to do that change one time. And you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to tap through or use my up and down arrows on these clips to find out when I get out of scene one, but just by looking at the slate. Oh, there we go to one A. So what I'm going to do is select that one and I'll shift select the top one. I can go over here to scene, use this little checkbox, type in one, hit save. And just like that, we've applied scene one metadata to all those clips. I'll do that with the next scene here, which is 1A. And just using the down arrow, I can quickly go through all of them. And like that, we have chosen all of them. We can choose scene, scene 1A, hit save. And all those have scene numbers. Now, the quickest way to do take, I found, is actually to do it over here in this list view and not in the metadata section over here. And what we're going to do by that is you just click into it. And once you do that, it's highlighted, it's blinking, you can type one. And then to get to the other fields quickly, you hit the tab on the keyboard. So hit tab two times, and that gets us over there. So hit two, tab two times, three, four, and I'll just keep going real quick. And that's it. So now you can see we have scene and take metadata associated with all these. You can also apply keywords really quickly, which is really cool. Um, there's default keywords that are in here and you can also um, set up your own. So there's a thing called a keyword dictionary. If you go up to a workspace and then go all the way down here to keyword dictionary and check on that, you can create your own keywords in here based off of whatever is pertinent information. So it could be an actor's name or something. But there's a lot in here that they've given you for free. And so we're just going to use one of those. We're going to use um, exterior because this is an exterior shot. And uh, you would add them just by clicking add, but we don't need to do that because we have ext. We're going to choose all the clips over here and add the keyword ext. And then just select this and now hit save. Now all those have three pieces of metadata. They have scene, take, and keyword. Now let's go rename them. This is the fun part. You have them all selected here. You right click, you say clip attributes, then you can go to name, check this box right here, and we're gonna get rid of that name. And what we're gonna do is add variables. This is really fun. So we're gonna do scene, take, and keyword. So to get the variables, you hit the percentage key on the keyboard, and then just start typing the variable you want. So I want the scene one. And then as soon as it starts to populate, if you just click on it, then you'll get, uh, the scene that's associated with that clip as the clip name. You'll see what I'm talking about once we finish this. Now I'm going to do an underscore. So we have a little separation. We'll do a percentage again that gets us our variables. We'll do take and then we'll choose take. And then one more we'll do underscore and we'll do percentage keyword. Okay. And it's actually called keywords plural, I guess. And now that all that stuff is set up, we can hit OK. And just like that, I don't know if you just saw all those clips that were sort of cryptic sort of went away and we have everything that's rated by our scene, our take and our keyword. So why this is so cool is we have useful information about the shot without me even having to open it or look at the thumbnail. So the beauty of renaming those clips there with those variables is it's automatically going to be switching them for you if you need to update or change something. And then if you go to the timeline in the edit page, they show up right there on the timeline as you're working. So this is one underscore one and you keep going through. You can quickly see that you don't even need to have like the thumbnails turned on for the clip to be able to see what the clip's about. You could you could save that RAM if you needed to and just sort of disable that. Real quick, time out here. I want to welcome you here. I'm Chadwick. This is Creative Video Tips, which is all about helping you create videos that make a difference and stand out. If you're into that, please subscribe right down below because it's free. 
and that way you don't miss out on next week's great tip. Also, it's been great to connect with so many of you down in the comments, so please keep those coming. I try to get to all of them. With that out of the way, I also want to show you that you can also still see your old clip file names when necessary, like maybe if you're conforming a final show, so let's check that out. So if you're conforming a show, you might actually need to see that original metadata, and that's really easy to access still without having to go turn those clip names off. All you need to do is go up to View, and then down at the bottom, there's a, a, an option called Show File Names. Okay, so under View, Show File Names, this will then show what the original uh, file name on your hard disk is actually referring to. So just because we changed the clip name over here in the media pool page, that did not change the file that's on the disk. So like for instance, I can prove that if I right click and I say reveal in finder, this is actually gonna point to a clip that is IMG0080. I think this was like from a 5D or something. If you learned something new from this video, make sure to give it a like, that way other people can find it too. And if you wanna learn more helpful editing tips for DaVinci Resolve, click right up here. And since there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in that next video.